What's going on, everybody? Paul here from Hashtag Sports. So news broke earlier today that the Buffalo Bills will be uh, obviously canceling training camp. The NFL has sent out ruling that uh, the Bills will need to practice at their at their home stadium. And that's not specific or exclusive to the Bills. The NFL told all teams they're only allowed to practice at their own facilities. So what does that actually mean to Buffalo? What does it mean to the future of uh, training camp at St. John Fisher? And... Uh, how does this all play out? Uh, let's take a look at it. All right, everyone. So here's kind of the deal. The Buffalo Bills got word uh, that training camp will have to be held at One Bills Drive. Now, this isn't really a big shocker. There's been you know long rumblings and even some off-season comments made uh, the last two off-seasons about the Bills' future at St. John Fisher. And it's kind of in question, and it's been in question for a little bit. So let's talk a little bit about what this means to Buffalo right now and what it could mean to you know those people who have been venturing out to training camp since forever ago, right? So the Bills have been at St. John Fisher for quite some time. And I did a little digging because I was just curious how much revenue was promised to them. They did sign a contract with St. John Fisher to do training camp out there, and obviously the NFL is superseding that contract. Uh, there's actually not many teams that still practice at facilities that aren't their own. They're actually uh, just, I think there are just slightly above 10 teams in the NFL still practice at outside facilities, um, and the Bills are one of them. Now, you may ask yourself, well, Paul, why are the Bills still training at St. John Fisher? Well, this goes back a long ways, right? Uh, mind you, there's two different facilities at St. John Fisher named after Ralph Wilson. So you can kind of see where this one's going, right? St. John Fisher is uh, was kind of the brainchild of St. John Fisher alum, Russ Brandon. That's right, Russ Brandon, those of you who may remember, former team president, um, got his start in, in uh, sports management, I guess, with the Rochester Red Wings, uh, which is a minor league affiliate uh, baseball organization and ended up working his way up uh, through you know various organizations and eventually landed with the Bills. Now, again, he saw an opportunity to align St. John Fisher with the Bills and he took it because it was his alma mater. Now, you may ask yourself, well, this how much revenue does that generate? Probably generates a lot, right? You figure the number of days that they're there, the massive amount of people that arrive, um, actually, I was kind of surprised by the numbers. Uh, the last few years that it was reported, they were making less than $300,000 for hosting training camp, which when you're talking about a school with, you know, $70 million budget, um, $300,000 isn't a lot, right? Especially to dedicate the, the campus to them for that period of time. But it, it was something that they were doing. Now, as far as Buffalo is concerned, how badly do you really want to be at St. John Fisher? Um, now, mind you, the move out to St. John Fisher, because they used to be at Fredonia, uh, SUNY Fredonia, until I believe 2000, and then they moved to um, St. John Fisher. I think that's right. But they used to be at SUNY Fredonia. But Russ Brandon, always the person to try to expand, expand the brand, said, hey, let's go out to St. John Fisher. We got to start our regionalization efforts. They wanted more people from, from that sort of central New York area to become interested in the Bills. Central New York was kind of a no man's land. It was a mix of Jets fans, Bills fans, other conglomerate NFL teams, and some Bills mixed in there. But Buffalo had the opportunity. It's straight down the 90. It's a communicable distance. So, hey, let's go ahead and let's try and bring those people to us. And to be honest with you, it did benefit St. John Fisher quite a bit. Freshman enrollment has been up like 14 or 15 percent since training camp started. Um, so it's been very beneficial to them uh, to have training camp there. But now you have to ask yourself, why is Buffalo still out there? Well, they had a contract with St. John Fisher and it would actually, they'd have to buy their way out of it. Now, you know, we're not talking a massive amount of money. They'd have to offset the revenue that St. John Fisher was receiving uh, if training camp were not to be held there. But here's the deal, guys. That contract runs out at the end of next season. So not this coming season. 2021 would actually be the last year that they're under contract with St. John Fisher. And previously, Russ Brandon negotiated an extension, which takes us to 2021. And obviously, that's not a concern any longer for very apparent reasons. But the Bills are now in an opportunity to kind of transition back to one Bills drive. Now, there are some positives for the Bills as far as having it out at St. John Fisher. One, they can kind of control the space a little bit, right? They can control the media, they control traffic, um, and it's an opportunity to get players in an area where um, 
you know, they're just a little bit away from home. They, they really want them to focus on football while they're there. Uh, yes, they make them stay in the dorms, um, but, and they do provide them with everything that they need while they're there, but it's college living. And I'm sure Jerry Hughes and, uh, you know, uh, the Trent Murphy and uh, Micah Hyde and all your savvy veterans don't appreciate having to sleep in a college dorm room, right? Because that's the expectation. They're supposed to stay there while they're at training camp. Um, so I'm sure they don't appreciate that because it takes them a little bit out of home life, right? Um, but Sean McDermott had said before that that's something that's a team exercise, a team building exercise, and something they were interested in continuing for now. Um, and again, this is always up for debate. The Bills just spent millions of dollars invested in their field house and in their uh, weight program um, and offseason uh, and, and their, um, their fitness center. You can't imagine for a moment that they still want to be at St. John Fisher, right? Like you really just can't imagine that they still want to be there. Maybe they do. Maybe I'm reading this wrong. But the facilities that you have at One Bills Drive should not be utilized only by rehabbing players. And that's kind of who's been using it, our players who are rehabbing during the off season. They don't need to be at training camp. They're rehabbing from injury. They might just have send them down to One Bills Drive instead of forcing them to rehab at training camp. Although most of the staff is at training camp, kind of depends on the injury, right? So why waste time in that facility? The Bills now have an award-winning strength and conditioning staff with award-winning facilities, top of the line, you cannot tell me that St. John Fisher's facilities are better than the millions of dollars that Buffalo just invested at One Bills Drive. So it brings you to the question of, okay, what are we doing with training camp? Well, it is going to be moved to One Bills Drive, and the Bills actually had a record low number of accessible practices. So um, what that means is practices that were open to the public. The Bills have been trimming down on that over the years, and for a long time they wanted as many accessible practices as possible, but the team the last few years has been trimming that number down. And at One Bills Drive, you can expect very much the same. They're going to do as few public practices as they can. Um, public practices are uh, something that bring a lot of fanfare and attention. Absolutely. It does not generate a massive number or massive amount of revenue, um, but it is something that is a, uh, a great experience for the fans. And from a culture perspective, you need to be as connected with the fans as possible. From a revenue perspective, you don't care about this money, right? It just doesn't generate that much money. Even if you were to monetize every practice, you're not making a ton of cash. So are the Bills going to move to one Bills drive permanently, possibly buying out their last season at St. John Fisher? Yeah, I think we're probably there. Um, you got to be realistic about this. It is travel. It's not a long travel, but players are going to, you know, gripe about not being able to establish themselves in a rhythm. Uh, they are going to have distractions during the off season. So it's kind of fascinating how they send them out to training camp, but then they did, uh, 10 practices at one Bills drive last year. Um, they did 13 at St. John Fisher, 10 in Buffalo. So they've been transitioning towards this for quite some time. Uh, and now with, uh, you know, COVID, uh, and coronavirus, you're kind of looking at just a massive, uh, you know, nail in the coffin of what used to be training camp at St. John Fisher. And, and the truth is you probably have to come to grips with the fact that it's not going to be returning. There's not a ton of benefits and most teams in the NFL are now doing it at their own facilities. And the NFL is now mandating this season that that happen. Uh, so will the Bills return to St. John Fisher in 2021 for their final season? I got to feel it's unlikely here. Um, it's an outstanding experience, right? St. John Fisher is a lot of fun to go uh, and experience the NFL training camp vibe. It's a great atmosphere. It's a lot of fun, um, but it's not something that couldn't be replicated at one Bills drive. Now, the fascinating thing is what is Monroe County going to do? Monroe County is actually projecting up to $60 million in losses because of sales tax, lost uh, motel you know, fees and, and taxes. Uh, they're talking about massive losses in revenue where St. John Fisher is actually uh, in the county that St. John Fisher resides. So what's going to happen if, uh, you know, those sales tax are removed, figuring the loss of training camp? Well, again, there wasn't a ton of revenue generated by training camp, but there was ancillary revenue, uh, you know, from people, you know, coming in from out of town, you know, grabbing motels, eating at local restaurants. So there definitely was economic benefit that didn't just indirectly impact St. John Fisher. But again, this that's not Buffalo's problem, right? The Bills are going to look at what is best for their culture, their team, 
you got to really feel at this point like that is staying at One Bills Drive, especially since they only did three more practices at St. John Fisher than they did at One Bills Drive last year. So now that the NFL is mandating it, this is where we're going to be. Um, all right, guys, just thought I'd throw that out there. Don't be surprised if the Bills opt out of that contract and don't return for 2021. They can buy that out. Um, who knows? Maybe they will. I personally like St. John Fisher, but I get why players would gripe about it. Um, and again, it's not something that couldn't be replicated at one Bills drive uh, when you do have public events. Uh, plus, you'll get the uh, use of that uh, strength and conditioning program and, and facility there at one Bills drive. So uh, it's probably going to happen, guys. If, if you love it, I'm sorry. If you're in Pittsburgh, if you're in the Rochester area and you drive to training camp every season, you've just been going the other way on the 90. For those of you that uh, have spent multiple days at training camp, uh, you know, my apologies. Remember, this was Ralph Will. This was an honor to Ralph Wilson, right? Brandon uh, brought a lot of money into St. John Fisher. Those days are behind us now. This isn't about Ralph Wilson's legacy. It's about the Pagula's r r legacy. And I know that's not going to sit well with a lot of people, but it's probably the reality of the situation. All right, Paul here from Hashtag Sports signing off. Have a good one.